Today marks the third annual National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. It's a day to recognize the ongoing impact and trauma of Canada's residential school system on First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. Also known as Orange Shirt Day, it honors the children who never returned home after being taken from their families. 140 federally run residential schools operated in this country between 1867 and 1996. It's believed about 150,000 children went through the system during that period. And for more on the significance of this day, we're joined live by MPP Solma Makwa, the deputy leader of the Ontario NDP and the critic of Indigenous and Treaty Relations. Mr. Mamakwa, thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me, Peter. When we talk about survivors from the residential school system, you are one of them. You stood up in the legislature this week. You talked about going to residential school for grade 9 and 10 in high school. Tell me about the significance of this day to you, Mr. Mamakwa, and what you're reflecting on today as a survivor. Yes, I think it's important to uh, share those stories. Um, you know, before we can have reconciliation, we need to have truth. And I think that's one of the reasons why I shared uh, my story in, um, in a very public way, because it's not something that I ever, ever do. So that, that's the first piece, like truth before reconciliation. And, and, I, and I think uh, it's important to uh, acknowledge, to take this day and, um, you know, the day, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, of, of course, to remember the children that never came home and uh, acknowledge the, uh, uh, the intergenerational impacts uh, that continues in different ways of this, uh, 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 the system that was, uh, you know, the, the children that never came home. Uh, uh, there's so many things that are happening continuously and uh, in different ways, you know, uh, uh, over representation of the the correction system. So, but I think uh, we it is a time to honor the survivors that are still here with us. It is a time to uh, read into uh, the uh, the truth and reconciliation uh, calls to action, the TRC calls to action, the nine to four, and um, and I think it's important to uh, do some uh, you know go go to any events that may be there. Uh, near you. Uh, I'm sure that there's events all over across the country. Today is an incredibly important day for education. Um, when you stood up in the legislature and you talked about being a survivor of the colonial system and how many people from your yearbook, Mr. Mamakwa, who are not here with us anymore, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to, you know, their families? <clears throat> You know, uh, it wasn't until uh, it was earlier this year I was given that yearbook and I looked through it actually. And then, um, you know, when I actually looked through those yearbooks, that's, uh, that's when I realized, you know, that they're not around anymore. And it really dawned on me at that time when I spoke about it. I remember not remembering the great, the great tale. Like that's really, really, that really hit me kind of reflecting that. But I think uh, uh, it's important to uh, uh, not forget uh, the families of the the survivors, uh, you know, like uh, the families, uh, the family, and uh, to acknowledge them. And they need to be able to, uh, uh, I think it's it starts a dialogue. Whatever whatever I said in the house starts a dialogue for people. Not just uh, not just me, but um, but others that are, uh, you know, that well, I went to school with that never talked about it in public. And, I, and that's, some, that's something that I've been doing within the last year, and, and that's all part of the conversation. Again, uh, truth before reconciliation. Tell me about the healing process, Mr. Mamakwa. Is sharing your story, the, story, the stories of some of your peers who went to these schools, does that help in the healing process for you? It's something that I never spoke about. It's never something I ever talked about. It, I just left it alone and uh, it was always there and uh, but I think it's all part of it it's all part of the healing process is to have that uh, talk about those things and uh, you know how it impacts you today and on the way things are the way you are and uh, what triggers you and and I think it's important to uh, talk about those things and uh, it, it, yes it's part of the healing process talking about it is part of the healing process you cannot keep it bottled up uh, you know until you die 
and it's these stories of survival, of resiliency that I think help people start to understand some of the atrocities that Indigenous peoples went through for generations. You talk about the importance, Mr. Mamakwa, of truth before we can get to reconciliation. In the last three years since this day started to be marked, have you seen any progress towards reconciliation being made? And if so, what? You know, uh, there's so many, uh, so we cannot just have these formative actions that, uh, formative action, performative actions, and we need to do, you know, invest into some of the resources that are, uh, you know, and the, uh, the 94 calls to action, right? Like, you know, uh, for example, in, in Ontario, we need to be able to, I spoke about that in my speech as well. You know, we need to, you know, the, the real history, we need to tell the real history of Canada. And, and I think that's really important, and, and, and that hasn't happened. And I think, um, you know, I mean, I still have, uh, you know, 12 long-term boil water advisories in, uh, uh, in my riding uh, of Kiwetnuk. So, you know, there's there's bigger things, but there's small things as well, right? Like, I think, uh, you know, for me, though, if I can change uh, one person's mind or uh, at least change the trajectory of the thinking of the people that listen to these issues, I would have had made change, and then I, I, I'm always a believer of that, and and I think that's uh, you know it's not about uh, how you know the number of steps we make forward towards reconciliation, but it's the you know the degrees that we change and the way we think about things, right? So that is really important for me. So uh, there's a little bit of change, but but it's going to take some time. But we need to fast track this reconciliation uh, for Indigenous people, for First Nations across Canada. Last question for you, Mr. Mamakwa, and you bring up, you know, having the platform you have as, you know, a public servant, someone who is Indigenous, someone who has been a residential school survivor. How much weight do you carry on your shoulders to be a, a spokesperson, to continue to bring up these issues, <clears throat> to, to bring them to light even in the legislature here in Ontario? You know, uh, sometimes... Uh it's hard to be able to bring these issues up and um, you know like like example today like uh, this is the only thing i'm doing um today i'm taking the day to myself and um, i'm just so tired i'm tired of uh you know trying to reconcile and um and i think that's just i, I just want to rest and uh right now and i think it's important for uh you know um People like me in my role uh, to be able to bring forward uh, the, the issues that, uh, that that people, the platform that, that I'm given, to be able to talk about those. And I think uh, I encourage others to reach out uh, that are uh, struggling, um, others that are, uh, you know, that want to help, that even allies, right? Like, you know, learn about those things. So it's always, um, that's the work we need to do. MPP Solmamakwa, thank you so much for joining us here on CP24. I wish you a day of rest. Thank you very much. Miigwech.